Hi, I'm Sloan Hartel, Content Manager at CFA Institute. I'm here with George Austin, who has spent a highly diversified career uh, entirely at JP Morgan Asset Management, uh, literally all over the place, Saudi Arabia, uh, New York, Relationship Review Tokyo. Committee, Tokyo. And you know, we're here today in, in part because he's also spent a long time caring about this, the nature of this industry as a profession, as chairman of the Financial Analyst Federation, uh, the, this New York Society of Securities Analysts. And so, t talk to me about that. Your views must have evolved over time. Well, um, to, I was an engineering undergraduate major. Mm -hmm. and I do have a degree in engineering, but as I went along, uh, I got an interest in the stock market. And I took my electives in accounting and economics and mm -hmm. en even English literature, so uh, I didn't slough off from the tough engineering co uh, courses. Mm -hmm. So I was so intrigued by the stock market, I went on to quickly get an MBA and fortunately landed a job at, the, at, at J.P. Morgan. And in those days, uh, we were the largest investor in the world. We had a very significant market share in pension funds mm -hmm. that uh, were formed in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And, um, Luckily, I uh, got a job as the oil analyst, which is a fascinating industry, mm -hmm. uh, global in nature. And then uh, we at, at Morgan pioneered in many of the uh, well-known asset classes of the day. I mean, mortgages, we were a pioneer, private placements, international securities, emerging market equity, even real estate equity. So uh, as it evolved, um, uh, we at Morgan were, were keenly supportive of the evolution of the CFA. Mm -hmm. right from the get-go. So the Financial Analyst Federation was formed in the late 40s in the CFA Institute uh, in the early 60s mm -hmm. uh, to uh, develop professionalism. And so I, I witnessed the industry go, our field, shall we say, go from a cottage industry mm -hmm. to a truly global investment profession. Mm -hmm. Code of conduct, ethics, trust, fiduciary, key words, that are important because in the management of funds, whether they be private pension funds, public pension funds, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, uh, trust is, is integral to the conduct of one's day-to-day -day activities. And uh, we're actually, in effect, representatives of society because the beneficiaries of these pension funds for sure, mm -hmm. and, he, and the individuals through their own 401ks, uh, it's a tremendous uh, responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted to uh, professionalize, uh, we mean uh, the leaders of, the, uh, of this emerging industry. Mm -hmm. So we've witnessed it go from basically bookkeeping uh, and uh, Dodd and Graham security analysis to literally uh, asset classes uh, proliferating here, there, and everywhere. Wow, yeah, it's uh, over over just fifty years. Yeah, I mean, you know, the guy has a weird idea that encounting information and you know security prices somehow are related. And you know, well, the know. modern portfolio theory, yeah, and it didn't really uh, come to the forefront at the various business schools until uh, the '60s, mm -hmm. and it didn't really get into practice until the '70s and '80s. So, uh, I mean, areas like derivatives, I mean, didn't exist uh, until really the. 80s. So we, we went from Graham and Dodd security analysis, Sidney Homer and bonds, and the World Bank and emerging market equities. These are pioneering uh, yeah. in, entities. And all the great work there is done at the, at the business schools of the United States, Harvard being a, a, a classic example, but there are others, Wharton, Chicago, Columbia, uh, Wisconsin, whose uh, here, uh, representative is here on the panel today. Uh, they, they did some great work, Indiana, Stanford. There's, there's tremendous work done in our investment field. So it was, it was going from from just uh, you know brokers, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in limited individual investing yeah. to the tremendous uh, exponential growth mm -hmm. of savings pools all over the world uh, to where we are today. Uh, I'm, I'm told there's 300 trillion dollars of uh, investable assets all over the world. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's gone up exponentially. So, so, you know, when you look at a, at a global profession today, and you've had a, a uniquely global career, um, and you're intimately familiar with the nuances of implementation, right? Um, Complicated you, and nuanced. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, do you think that that nuance can be overcome to make this a true global profession? 
Well, I actually think it is a truly global profession. Mm -hmm. uh, the CFA registered trademark uh, is an, a perfect example. Um, uh, we now have uh, t over 200,000 people taking the CFA exam every year all over the world. My charter holder number is 3320. Wow. So uh, either it says I was really uh, just a kid when I, when I took it or, or we've really grown. <laughs> He's actually really grown. And uh, I must say it's very satisfying because one of our goals, both as a, as a leader of our industry, was to internationalize our industry. Mm -hmm. I said Morgan was a pioneer in international investing, is certainly true, and mm -hmm. I'm a living example of being all over the world, yeah. uh, representing uh, uh, my employer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the workshop itself, uh, when I first went to the workshop in 1973, 45 years ago, there were uh, just two. Uh, Canadians, I'm not saying they were foreigners, but they are our, our, our neighbors to the north. Uh, there were two, mm -hmm. and in the whole, uh, and now it's two thirds international representatives of, uh, of, of many, many, many countries, and more recently, including China. That's, it's remarkable. So it's a, just a tremendous change. So, and the uh, growth of the CFA program in China, uh, oh, wow, uh, yeah. you know, which uh, with their uh, history, I mean, they were a tremendous world leader in the 1800s, and then of course they went through a, a shall we say, a rough patch in the in the in the 1940s and 50s. But mm -hmm. uh, here they are now, the second largest economy in the world. Tremendous interest in the investment and management industry. So I believe it's already a global investment profession, having evolved over 60 years, just you know, speck of time in the yeah. history of the world, uh, from uh, what I think of as a cottage industry. No, you know. The first investment management workshop you went to, seventy three, uh, seventy three, and then thirty three times after that. Well, uh, uh, there were there used to be yes, I I am an unabashed advocate for our industry, mm -hmm. uh, is our profession, and also for the workshop. It um, uh, I'll never forget it because uh, at uh, in nineteen seventy three there was a, one of the cases was an article out of uh, Fortune magazine about the so called Nifty Fifty. Now anybody in our profession. And I'm sure you too, Sloan. Uh, I know you know you're younger than I am, but uh, you've heard about the Nifty Fifty a couple times. Uh, a couple of times, <laughs> and uh, that was a serious hot topic at the time because, as a representative of the largest investor in the world, and we were uh, on behalf of pension funds mainly and sovereign wealth funds at the, of the time and endowments in that order. Uh, we were a target of the Fortune article saying that, well, it's just buy and hold, and uh, how can you uh, buy these stocks and hold them forever at 50 times earnings? And so the brilliant Harvard professors uh, used me as a definite uh, guinea pig, and uh, I'll never forget it. So I uh, came back and reported to my uh, uh, leadership at uh, the firm that, gee, this, they're, they're, they're after us, and uh, maybe they're on to something, so maybe we have to think that <laughs> So that was actually coincided with the beginning of modern portfolio theory and security about, you know, uh, valuation as opposed to just earnings. So, mm -hmm. so it led to, uh, I can't say it immediately led to uh, changes within our organization, but it, it did ultimately lead to changes in uh, how we conducted our own investment process. So it was a very moving experience. Now, I went again because many, there are many repeats of, mm -hmm. uh, at the investment management workshop uh, uh, because they th think so well of it in conjunction with Harvard. And this, this was an idea of the CFA leaders of the time to mm -hmm. create this program. So to their credit, uh, here it is 50 years later. So I went again in 81 after some over, uh, overseas assignment. And then we, we at that time had a board of trustees for the workshop of many of the leaders of our industry. Unfortunately, I was asked to join the board. So I was on the board for 20 years and we'd have our uh, board meeting around the workshop. So mm -hmm. that's uh, 20. Oh uh, gosh. That's 20 of yeah. the but, but I guess I was so passionate about the workshop, they said, well, keep, you know, come back if you want and you can be, a, you can be our, uh, our uh, advocate, uh, if you will, and spread the good news of the benefits of the workshop. So I, I took him up on it with, I must say, with a, another a very good friend of mine uh, who was uh, in the very first workshop, Wally Stern. I have to give him credit. Uh, he just recently retired from the, as chairman of Capital International. He's a very dear friend. So he retired at the uh, ripe age of 86. There's an indication of the longevity of the type of uh, field we're in. Yeah, and, and yeah. The, and the, uh, uh, so, uh, 
uh, Wally and I uh, have uh, have uh, willingly gone back to wave the flag and support and encourage the participants and more and more participants and spread the good news of the benefits of this workshop. So that's uh, a little bit of history of how it got to 33. Wally's actually... Uh, 45, right? I think he's at 45. <laughs> <laughs> that's remarkable. I mean, that's a good hit rate. Uh, uh, yes, and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the firms, I'm, there, there are quite a number of firms that, uh, that uh, have locked into this workshop and keep sending leaders and emerging leaders in their respective firms uh, as our industry grows. Uh, so it, 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 it's, we, we want to do more to spread the good news and, and uh, illustrate how valuable this workshop is, thus this panel today here mm -hmm. at well, the CFA New York. Well, yeah, and, you know, and, and one of the things that, you know, the, this workshop, you know, so the CFA designation is about, okay, so if this is what you need, once you've passed this, and if you encounter an investment idea in the wild, it's not going to scare you. You know, but the investment management workshop is meant to push the frontier as a practice for it. There are a lot of new ideas that you've you know kind That's of seen. Correct. And you know, I'm kind of curious. What are you tired of hearing about? What uh, which of these sort of con investment you, you, concepts are ready for for us to retire? You know, because the the uh, the cases that the Harvard faculty uh, use, and there are about twelve of them each uh, each year, mm -hmm. a one week uh, session for four or five days. Uh, the twelve it rotates. Every three years, so mm -hmm. the the ones that are most effective, they just uh, repeat it the next. Oh, gotcha. but, but but because the industry is changing so rapidly, there there are, there are three or four cases every year new, mm -hmm. uh, so it never gets old. So in in fact, it's it's almost because something new has come up, it drops out something old. But we could do it again. Like uh, uh, Vanguard comes to mind. Vanguard mm -hmm. is a fascinating uh, case. Uh, uh, but it's they're evolving, so the case evolves uh, within the workshop, uh, and now they're the second largest investor uh, in the world to you know BlackRock, and uh, so in fact it's interesting that uh, many of the participants' firms they become cases themselves. I mean, we were a case in 1984 as. International fixed income mm -hmm. emerged as an asset class. Currencies, you know, we didn't have floating exchange rates until the early 70s. Yeah. You know, we were on the gold standard until 71 <laughs> in, in America. August the 16th, I think it was, of 71, we went off the gold standard, and then the euro markets were evolving and currencies were floating. So uh, all these assets, it's always something new, and mm -hmm. that's the beauty of the workshop and the, uh, that, uh, the, that the Harvard faculty are just always at the forefront. Okay. ETFs uh, come to mind as an example. I mean, they've always been at the forefront. So it's almost like nothing ever gets tired. I mean, <laughs> stocks are stocks are always with us. It's a question yeah. of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, value, valuation that's, that, that uh, is well known today. But So there's always something new in mm. our industry. Yeah, exactly. You know, and well, you know, thank you so much for your stewardship of, of this body and for, you know, well, enabling me to have, to have these conversations well. today and of for well. uh, your great boostering of the, uh, the, the, of the, management the famous workshop uh, 50 years worth. Well, we, it's, a, it's what I think of as a collaboration mm -hmm. of the CFA Institute and the Harvard Business School. Uh, they are really good at, yeah. at what they do. And, I've heard that. Uh, they're really good at what they do. And I have to sing the praises of uh, Luis mm -hmm. Pachera, Andre Perold, and uh, Jay Light, who later became uh, dean of the Harvard Business School. He was, uh, he, he was uh, uh, there in uh, 1973. I mean, I, we were just kids, <laughs> but and, uh, with, with some serious uh, topics at hand. <laughs> Uh, he's retired now, as, uh, as I am, but, uh, and, they're, and the whole faculty, but under the leadership, those three individuals come to mind, Jay Light, Andre Perel, now Luis Vachero. Oh, awesome. they're, they're terrific. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.